Hello, I am Fielden Allison. I've been a missionary in Africa since 1972. Most of that time was in East Africa. I'm here today with my wife, Janet. We've been counseling and teaching on marriage and family many of those years. Janet has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and we've worked together to strengthen marriages since 1984. We founded an organization called the Africa Institute of Marriage and Family in an attempt to meet the ever-changing needs of the African home. We're looking at some common questions that were asked from time to time as we teach seminars and workshops and as we counsel couples. What is the question we're going to be considering today, Fielden? Our question for today is one that we've been asked often during seminars and workshops that we teach. The question is, should a married couple have a joint bank account or should they have two separate accounts? This is an issue that causes a problem for many couples how to handle finances. One spouse wants to buy certain items and use money in a specific way, but the other one wants to buy different things and has a plan to spend their money in an entirely different manner. Mm -hmm. Or one spouse may not have a plan at all. He or she just wants to be able to spend money whenever he or she wants to on whatever he or she desires. But to be specific, I have seen many couples complain about how a spouse gives money to his or her family members. Mm -hmm. The husband may take some money to his parents without discussing it with his wife, and then the wife takes some money secretly to give to her parents. Soon, they're having serious financial problems. Yeah, and this kind of problem can bring stress Mm -hmm. into a marriage, leading to quarrels and disagreements. Mm -hmm. I have seen problems like this lead to a complete breakdown in communication, leading to resentment. Some couples try to solve the problem by having two bank accounts, one for the husband and another one for the wife. What do you think about that solution, Janet? That may seem like a good solution to the problem. If both the husband and the wife have jobs outside the home and they both have incomes. However, in our work with couples over the years, We have seen that those who choose to have separate bank accounts are often just as troubled with resentment and distrust as those who have one bank account, or no bank account at all. Yes, that's true. One spouse is often expected to carry the major responsibility of the home and buying groceries for the family, while the other spouse seems to be spending his or her money frivolously on him or herself. Mm -hmm. Yes, we often see that one spouse seems to have more of a sense of responsibility, more wisdom, more understanding about how to handle finances than his or her partner. If this one sees the other spouse spending money foolishly, then he or she may begin to resent the other partner. Fielden, in your experience as a teacher and a counselor, have you seen that the husband is usually the responsible one and the wife is more irresponsible? No, not at all. In fact, from my observation, I have to say that the wife is more often the more responsible of the two. Many small loan companies who focus on helping poor people open small businesses have seen this trend also. These companies often give loans to women only, refusing to give money to men because they've seen that women are usually more reliable than men at handling money and at repaying the loans. You know, something I've seen that really surprised me at first is that often churches, as well as other organizations, will choose a woman to be the treasurer for the group, to keep the money and perhaps the financial records as well. It seems that many people trust women more than men and consider them more reliable when it comes to handling or keeping money. In your opinion, Fielden, what does this mean for marriages? where the man is designated as the head of the home and the woman is supposed to be in subjection to him. Well, actually, when it comes to handling and keeping finances, the issue is not about who is the head of the home and who is supposed to be in submission. Even in governments, you have a president, then you have a minister of finance. Everyone understands that the president is the head of the government and that the minister of finance is under him. The president doesn't have time to be bothered with all the details of how the money is being handled. The minister of finance serves him by taking care of all of those details and reporting to him personally. I see what you mean. 
And in a marriage, it's not about being the head. It's more about individual strength, gifting, or ability when it comes to money matters. In one home, it may be that the husband is more gifted at managing money than his wife is. And in another home, it may be that the wife is more capable of handling finances than her husband is. Exactly. So the object is to find and use the individual strengths of the couple. Janet, you've taught math to college students. What have you noticed when it comes to men versus women in math skills? Yes, I have taught both high school and college students and have found that often a girl is at the head of the class. I have even taught some married couples together college math. Sometimes the husband is better in math than his wife is, and sometimes the wife is better. So I think you're right that the issue of controlling family finances is not about who is the head of the home, but it is about who is more skilled in mathematics, in handling finances, and in keeping financial records. You mentioned earlier that many organizations, including churches, select a woman to be the treasurer to keep their money. This indicates that they have noticed that women are often better at keeping funds than men are. I sometimes laughingly refer to you as my minister of finance. Uh, I readily admit that my wife is better at handling finances than I am. It's a, it's a great relief to me to have her beside me to help me manage our money. In those same organizations that choose a woman to manage funds, they usually select a man to be their chairman. So I think we can assume that most people don't see the keeping of the money and financial records as a sign of that person being the one in control. And it may also show that many people can see the benefit of combining the skills and strengths of both the man and the woman, that they make a stronger team when they're working together. But I'd like to point out here, even though our question was about a joint versus separate bank account, these principles apply to people who don't even have bank accounts. In fact, we can even look back at earlier times before banks became a common thing. The men's place was traditionally out guarding the cattle and goats or hunting for meat, while the women were the keepers of the resources at home and in control of the food stores a most precious asset. The cattle were like their bank accounts, which the men kept secure, but the women controlled their assets that had been liquidated. So we see that cooperation is not a new concept at all. It's just become a bit more complicated in our modern economic situation. Well, that's a good point. Getting back to our question of whether a couple should have one joint account or two separate accounts, I think we can see the strength of having a joint account. In fact, consolidating their accounts into one account will actually save them a lot of money on fees. I don't know if many people notice how much money the bank takes every month out of their accounts for banking fees. Close an account and save some money. Anyway, a couple should share everything that they have. When two people get married, all of their individual assets then become ours instead of just mine. So they should be jointly managed by both of them together. Mm -hmm. When God created woman, he made her in order to be a helpmeet for man. In Genesis 2.18, we learn that God decided to make a helpmeet for Adam. Yes, when we look at that verse in Genesis 2.18, we see that God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. God saw that man desperately needed a helper in more ways than one. I sometimes wonder, how did many couples ever get the idea that the term helpmeet signifies inferiority or having less ability? We know that woman is weaker physically than man. As Paul points out in 1 Peter 3, 7, where he says, You husbands, live with your wives in an understanding manner, giving honor to the woman as the weaker vessel and as joint heirs of the gracious gift of life. We can all agree that God made man to be the stronger of the two physically. However, this has nothing to do with her mental or spiritual Mm -hmm. capability. Exactly. The term help meet simply means a helper who meets the needs of the man. 
The woman is to work alongside her husband, helping him in any area where he is weak and supporting him in any area where he is strong. They should be willing to fill each other up, using each other's strengths and covering each other's weaknesses. In other words, as we look at this matter of finances, if the husband is good in dealing with money, then the wife should meet his need by cooperating with him, helping him to make a monetary plan, and then very conscientiously following that plan. However, if the husband is not strong in managing finances, his wife can meet his need by advising him and by handling the funds for him and or keeping financial records in a trustworthy manner. I like the way you explain that, Janet. What we see when a husband and a wife are working well together is two people complementing each other, filling in for each other's weaknesses. And as co-workers, there should be no secrets between the two. When one of them spends money secretly, this leads to suspicion and distrust. Yes, when one partner sees money going out and there's no evidence or information given about where it's going, that partner may begin to suspect that the other partner is spending money on someone else. When my friend Lois learned that her husband Everett, this are not their real names, had been having an affair with another woman, I agreed to work with them to help them reconcile. One of the first questions Lois asked Everett as we were progressing in counseling was what he did with the onion money after they had harvested. He had taken a load of onions to market one day, but never adequately explained what happened to the money. Sure enough, during the counseling, he admitted that he had used the money to buy clothes for his girlfriend and her children. Lois and Everett's marriage survived and was eventually transformed because they got the help they needed. However, we can see just how sensitive this issue of money can be. You know, that goes to show just how important it is to be open about money matters and to make financial decisions together. Even if the partner knows that the money is going to the other one's relatives, it can lead to resentment when they didn't decide together how to use their money. Disagreements over how money should be spent can lead to marital problems and a buildup of resentment. You're so right. Most of us have a limited supply of money, and when one sees large amounts of that money being used without him or her having any voice in making that decision, it can cause problems that divide the couple. So, regardless of whether a couple has one, two, or even three bank accounts, they should communicate with one another to make decisions on how all of their resources should be used. Yes, it's absolutely essential that a couple sit down together and plan their budget. Both the husband and the wife should have some input into how their money will be spent. Each of them should have a, a say and tell what personal and general needs or desires they have, and then together they make decisions on how to divide their resources among all the categories that they have come up with. But, Filden, what happens when they disagree on how the money should be divided between the different needs that they've come up with? I think that sometimes couples decide to have separate accounts in the hope that they can avoid conflicts. However, as we've already seen, even having separate accounts can lead to suspicion and resentment. The only sure way to avoid misunderstanding is to sit down and decide together how their finances should be divided. It goes back to the idea of oneness that we read about in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Speaking about the husband and the wife, God says, and the two of them shall become one body. This concept of oneness encompasses their resources among all other things. Oh, you're absolutely right, Fielden. In this oneness, the couple stand stronger as they draw on the individual strengths of each member. A couple may not immediately agree on how their resources should be used. However, they should not be afraid of disagreement. They simply need to keep talking, keep working, until they can find a way to agree. That's right. Each spouse should have an equal voice so that all the needs and perspectives are presented. Each one needs to feel complete freedom to express his or her feelings 
so that there will be no room for resentment later. Finances are a critical area in a marriage, yeah. and they must be discussed and agreed upon together. Otherwise, it can lead to many problems. So to answer the question of whether a couple should have joint or separate accounts, a joint account is preferable. But even if they have separate accounts for some reason, the couple should decide together how all the money in both of the accounts will be used. Remember that this is a general principle that should be followed in most situations. However, understand also that there could be certain circumstances that could call for a different approach to the matter. For instance, if a woman is married to an alcoholic, she may need to take some unusual steps in order to protect her family's resources if possible. Or perhaps a man is married to a woman who is mentally challenged. He may need to take control of their finances. However, under normal circumstances, this principle of working together and making joint decisions on how their finances should be handled is the best policy. We hope that these few remarks have been helpful to you. Money issues can cause enormous problems in a marriage. So make a plan to sit down together with your spouse and communicate with one another with complete openness and honesty how you feel about the way you've, you're handling your finances and then decide together what you need to do about it to make it right. If you find that you can't work things out or come to an agreement on how to proceed, then look for a wise person in your church or your community, a person who has experience and understanding of these issues, a person who obviously has a strong marriage, him or herself. Then spend some time with this person and his or her spouse and ask them for advice. If there is any area in your marriage that is troubling you, seek out the help that you need. Don't just let your marriage deteriorate. If you have any question for us, feel free to contact us at Africa Institute of Marriage and Family or send a message to our email address, aimfradio at gmail.com. We'll be happy to communicate with you personally and try to answer your questions. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.